SBS warns that the following program contains material that may be distressing to some viewers. Palestinians dream of creating their own independent state. Their leader believes everything else comes second. In the name of nation building, he's allowed corruption, attacks on free speech, and the torture of his own people. I believe that we are in a transitional period. And that if you follow a dictatorial regime during an interim period, that can spill over into what kind of state we will have. Since the Palestinian Authority was set up in 1994, they've negotiated limited self-rule in a fraction of what they see as their historic homeland. They're paying a high price. But Yasser Arafat believes that his way is the only way. Arafat, he wants the Palestinian flag over the sovereign Palestinian soil. It's almost like an obsession. Palestinian police run through an arrest exercise. They look like soldiers, but this is a civilian force. They've been trained by foreign police, including British officers, and they're keen to show they treat suspects correctly. To prove it, they let the BBC film them for two days. That sort of openness doesn't exist in many Arab countries. Israel agreed to accept armed Palestinian police in the self-rule areas to stop attacks on Jews. The force also provides secure jobs and it's a powerful symbol of sovereignty. Some of these men were refugee children in Lebanon, Syria or Jordan, then guerrilla fighters who came back from exile with Yasser Arafat. But many more grew up throwing stones and petrol bombs at Israeli soldiers during the Intifada, the Palestinian uprising. Their old skills are still useful on the training ground. These young men, many members of Fatah, Arafat's organization, see themselves as veteran freedom fighters. <laughs> التحقت في صفوف تنظيم حركة فتح طوال ما قبل فترة الانتفاضة وخلال فترة الانتفاضة تم تجديد عدة نشاطات في خلال فترة الانتفاضة وتم اعتقال عدة مرات من قبل السلطات الإسرائيلية وحتى وصلنا إلى هذه المرحلة اللي نوعا ما سائلة وبنتأمل أو نطلب إنه العالم ينظر إن نظرة سرطي الحضاري اللي بيقدم طبعاً الخدمات لا مجتمعه ولا شعبه ولا حتى يتمكن ويساعد في بناء الدولة حتى يعيش في أمن وأمن وما ينظر إنه نظرة سرطي اللي عبارة عن يعني عصا على المواطن. Without a doubt, the civilian police have improved their human rights record, but there are other shadowy, brutal groups who haven't changed. There's preventive security. And general intelligence, another branch of the secret police. Then there's the military intelligence organization. And Force 17, Arafat's personal bodyguard. They're all rivals. Arafat divides them and rules them. So many 
kind of security forces. Some people said that they are 10, some others said that they are 12. The question is, if the Palestinian people are really in need for such a lot of various security forces. What do you think? It seems to me that the Palestinian state is, looks like a police state. Scores of Palestinians have been tortured in the authorities' jails. The brutality has been condemned around the world. Israel also tortures terrorist suspects. Ramiz Halabi is a member of Islamic Jihad. Palestinian security agents tortured him, claiming he'd organized suicide bomb attacks against Jews. <laughs> أن أسير على قدمي أو أن أقف أو أن أجلس حتى أن يعني أتقبل أن أصبح لي رأسين من شدة الضرب الذي تعرضت له ومن شدة الضرب الذي كان يأتي على رأسي وقام أيضا بنزع أربع إلى خمس أظافر من أظافري وقام أيضا بكسر ريشتين من القفص الصدري كانت طريقة يعني طريقة وحشية جدا أشد من التي كانت تستخدم إبان ال الثورة الفرنسية أو قبلها بحيث قاموا بالضرب بكابل الكهرباء على يدي بهذا الشكل هيك فمباشرة كان الظفر ينتزع. Halabi was never charged with a crime. He denies he's guilty, but he's back in jail, arrested after the latest suicide attack. More than 150 Israelis have been killed and almost 2,000 wounded in over 20 attacks since the peace process started in 1993. Most were organized by Hamas and Islamic Jihad. The authority has promised to do everything it can to stop the bombers, but saving Jewish lives also sends shockwaves through Palestinian society. The pressure from the outside, from the Israelis basically, is enormous because those same outsiders who are criticizing the record of the Palestinian Authority, they are encouraging the authority, they are pushing and pressuring the authority to crack down on opposition groups. They want, you know, when you talk about the eradication of the terrorist organizations, quote unquote, what do you mean by that, you know? Do you mean Hamas, for instance? Many members of Hamas, many members of other groups are merely political opposition. So, if you pressure the authority on the one hand, and then you criticize the authority when it does what it does to appease and please you, then this is hypocrisy. This is Gaza jail. The Palestinian Authority calls it a rehabilitation center. The PA says conditions are much better now than when it took over the jail from Israel in 1994. But the authority imprisons Palestinians without trial, without respecting the due process of law. They let us into a wing that seemed relatively humane. After complaints, some warders here have had human rights lessons. The colonel in charge asked the questions. But former inmates say that in other parts of the prison, away from the places like this workshop where they allow visitors, there are interrogation rooms where torture is routine. Not just for alleged terrorists, but for non-violent political offenders, for people accused of selling land to Jews who are regarded as traitors, and even for common criminals.
drug dealers arrested and tortured severely, which I don't believe that the Americans and the Israelis are putting pressure on the PA to torture uh, drug dealers. Uh, land dealers were tortured, which I believe that the Americans and the Israelis trying to protect the rights of the land dealers and the people who suspected as collaborators by the Israelis. So you couldn't include all of the such kind of torture as, and to come to say that it's a result of the Israelis and the American pressure. 20 people have died violently in the authorities' jails. Their bodies usually bear the marks of terrible beatings. The authority says their deaths were mistakes by individuals who will be punished. The children of Walid Khawazmi, a businessman, saw him just before he died. <laughs> قالوا لي يما ما هو كان صحته يعني منيحه وكان كرشه هيك دوي اجوا قالوا لي فش ولا شيء له كرشه رايح وابونا ضعفان خربان وبعدين مش صاحي كان مش صاحي فش يعني مش مجمع her husband was killed a few days later she was given his mutilated body for burial لما اخذوا شرحوا لهم لقيوا كاسرينه كاسرين راسه في ال... بشيء كاسرين الجمجمه وهون غازينه زي ابر هيك على المخيخ حكوا الدكاتره على المخيخ عشان يشللوا ايديه ويفقد الذاكره مش يعني قصدهم يقوت... يعني يموت موت بس بدهم يشللوا ويخلوا يعني فاقد الذاكره One of Khwazmi's jailers was sentenced to seven years, but the family is still waiting for a proper investigation. No doubt there are some mistakes. There's some violation of human rights. Some torture happened in the prisons. What I know that uh, there are an investigation about all the cases which happened uh, and abuse in the prisons or torture or something like that. We fight against it strongly. But the authorities' investigations have not ended torture, according to human rights groups. Far too often, the families of the victims are left waiting for justice. The relatives of Youssef El Baba, who died in Nablus jail almost two years ago, still don't know who killed him. His brother doesn't like speculating about who's to blame. He puts his faith in Yasser Arafat, who met him and promised a proper investigation. كان التعذيب في كل مكان تحت الأباط بالإيد بالإيد من هون حتى حطين حتى حطين زي مواسير مشان سحب الميكروب كان تعذيب لا يقبل عقل. The Albabas suspect there was a cover up. The authority says that two of his brothers, alleged killers, are in jail being investigated. But after two years of waiting, he doesn't believe it. Some of the people who kill people in prison are out of uh, jail today. Even when they're sentenced to this penalty, this does not bring to the ordinary soldier or policeman a sense that there is a system, there is a discipline. So whenever something happens, if he's involved in something, he knows in the back of his mind that if he kills somebody, he could get away with it.
wasn't supposed to be like this. No Palestinian wants the Israelis back, but they all thought that self-rule would set them free. On the road to an independent state that most people assume would be a democracy where human rights were guaranteed, it was going to be the greatest achievement of Yasser Arafat. After a lifetime of struggle, he's more than just the leader of his people. He's become the symbol of the Palestinian nation. Yasser Arafat put Palestinians on the world political map. He sent fighters to attack Israeli targets. For years, his enemies vilified him as a terrorist. To his people, he was a hero, a man who would take on the world to regain the land they lost to Israel. But in 1993, he committed Palestinians to giving up violence in exchange for land. Yasser Arafat believes he's the only man who can deliver a Palestinian state using the methods he learned in exile. Yasser Arafat, being there for so long, being a charismatic leader who launched a revolution uh, and a very difficult one in a very difficult circumstances, and he's a survivor, but I think that he likes to work solo. I don't think that he wants a political process as we know it in democratic societies. He wants the establishment of a Palestinian state as soon as possible. This is not only a dream for him, but this is the goal of his life. I cannot claim that Arafat is going to change uh, from a revolutionary to a state builder just like that. It's tough. This is not a revolution anymore. This is building a state. This is building peace. This is building democracy. Arafat yet has to prove that he is capable to do it, of doing that. At the moment, the Palestinians control 60% of Gaza and parts of the West Bank. Israel has promised to return more occupied land if the authority is fighting terror. Arafat believes the only response is rigid control, trusting almost nobody and bossing his people like a tribal chief. Israeli troops still surround the self-rule areas. Arafat's critics believe he'd free his people faster if he used democracy. In my mind, I think that he thinks that first get the state and then we will reconstruct it internally so as long as we are you know in this process of grabbing land from here and there let's not talk much about what what is going on internally and this is a serious mistake In 1996, the Palestinian people voted for a legislative council. They thought it was the first step towards a democratic state, even though the opposition refused to take part. So why hasn't the council been able to check Arafat's power? The legislative council, unfortunately, is, is a catastrophe. When it came to begin with, it was the first historic moment for us Palestinians to feel so empowered that we all went to vote. 86% of the Palestinian population went to vote. We felt that this is our chance to have our parliament. But today, the parliament is voting itself out by the conduct of its members. It has passed so many resolutions that were not respected. They were not fulfilled by the authorities. Inside its first year, the council decided to assert its independence by tackling corruption within the Palestinian National Authority. Corruption seemed to be all-pervasive. It was alarming and infuriating most ordinary Palestinians. At the time, some Palestinians said to me that it had become as big an enemy as the Israelis. So a committee went to work and in July 1997 produced this report. It contained detailed and scathing allegations of a network of institutionalized corruption that went right up into Yasser Arafat's inner circle. 
The report named specific ministries and senior ministers it said should resign. Jamil Tarifi, Minister of Civil Affairs, was accused of avoiding customs duties on imported cars. One of Arafat's main spokesmen, the Minister of Information, Yasser Abid Rabo, was alleged to have taken seven and a half thousand dollars from the ministry's budget for his own use. The Minister of Planning and leading peace negotiator, Nabil Shah, was said to have used public money to pay his own bills and awarded official contracts to his son's companies. The ministers deny the allegations. The perception is, is really what matters here. Until we have our state, people expected that the officials would be more like them, not governing them, but more like them. There is a perception, it might be wrong, but there is a perception that we have officials who are here to take, not to give. And this is causing a lot of problem internally with the perception of the people. The report was sent to Yasser Arafat, who buried it. The ministers, all picked by him, are still in their jobs. The Palestinian executive authority started to deal with the report, but unfortunately not in the way which I hope and the council hope. We hope that will come to the people to say, well, there was mistakes here and there, and it's been treated in a very clear way, and it's been corrected in this way. This has not happened. Abdul Jawad Saleh has known Yasser Arafat for more than 20 years, in exile and then as Minister of Agriculture. He resigned in protest at the failure to tackle corruption. How does Yasser Arafat choose the people who are around him, the main figures who On the basis of uh, loyalty and, and uh, personal allegiance to him. Just that? Just that. What about competence? No. This is the last thing they, he thinks of. How does he reward loyalty? Well, in positions, in financial uh, gifts and uh, trips and uh, fulfilling many of uh, the concerned uh, wishes. And what does he expect in return? Complete uh, obedience and loyalty. Criticism? No, no, no. Debate? Uh, debates he doesn't mind. Uh, talking doesn't, he doesn't mind, but uh, uh, the decision should be his. More than three million Palestinians whose families lost their homes to Israel in the wars of 1948 and 1967 are classified as refugees by the UN. Most of them still live in camps. They're poorer than ever, and the authority, which they hoped would make their lives better, seems to be letting a few fat cats enrich themselves. Hussam Hadeh is the hero of Balata, the biggest camp on the West Bank. He led its fight against the Israeli occupation. Now he believes his people are being betrayed by Palestinian corruption. The Palestinian people nowadays feel that they are disappointed and uh, they said in the street and uh, everywhere uh, we didn't fight for 70 years uh, because uh, f for what we are raising up now uh, the, the people they didn't trust in the authority in general because of the corruption but now the people uh, gave up the people gave up The courts are another vital national institution that is being destroyed by the leadership's refusal to share power. 
الشاد الصحيح ولو زيادة ومصاب ولو زيادة Lawyers and judges are overworked and underpaid. There's a huge backlog of cases. The system is so inefficient that many Palestinians have gone back to tribal law, taking disputes to their clan chiefs rather than using the courts. But what's really damaging is that the authority sometimes ignores court orders to release political prisoners. Israel also detains Palestinians without trial. But Palestinians were hoping for something better from their own people. <laughs> وقد تكون من هذه المسائل نتدخل السلطات الأخرى أو خلق ما يمكن أن نسميه جهات أخرى هي في الأصل يجب أن تبتعد عن المجال القضائي ولكنها تأخذ يعني أعمال يجب أن تنظرها المحاكم This man hoped the Palestinian courts would release his son Marwan who's in a Palestinian prison he hasn't been charged, but he's suspected of being a member of the military wing of Hamas. وقدموا للمحكمة وإذا بتقدر أن تحكموا عليه يعني إذا في على شيء حكموا ولا ما في شيء شي لازم تطلعوا. In Israel's early days, politicians sometimes ignored court orders to release prisoners, but then the rule of law was established. Many Palestinians think their leaders should also learn to respect the law, and they fear that their state is being damaged before it's even born. I think that Israel will not arrest any of its citizens because Arafat wanted him to, to be arrested if that was outside the law. Even if they put pressure on Arafat, he should go back and tell them, I want to build a Palestinian state based on respect of its citizens. I have to respect the law. You respect it in your country. Why don't I respect it in my country? Fayez Abu Rahmeh has known Yasser Arafat since university. He became attorney general, but he was forced to resign after he tried to release 11 Hamas members who'd been jailed without charge. Were they alleged to have done anything, attacked anybody? No, no, there were no, there were no such allegations. So what did you do? So I, I signed a release order for the 11 and gave it to the head of the prison <laughs> who implemented that and an earthquake happened the head of the police was sacked and the head of the police department who signed the order of release was detained for three days I was told that the president has reordered the, uh, their recapture again and that uh, nobody has the right to release these people but the president. Uh, this I didn't know. Well, you thought that as attorney general, yeah, that was part of your job. Yeah, uh, so and I, I was in no need to uh, consult with anybody. 
So it's my it's my job. It's my uh, it's my office to uh, to do all these things. The Palestinian courts provide no sort of check on the power of the leadership. The security forces ignore court orders to release prisoners when it suits them. The Yasser Arafat doesn't want independent courts. They could restrict his freedom to act and to lead, and he believes that anything that dilutes his power jeopardizes the national project. But some Palestinians warn that ignoring the courts is even more dangerous for their nation's future. There is nobody that is qualified to challenge the high court order at all. And the violation of the high court order is political and politically motivated. It is not at all something to do with the rule of law. It is something that is above the law, and they are assuming that kind of the, the Palestinian Authority assuming that they have the right to challenge even the High Court of Justice for political reasons. But they gave excuses. One of the excuses is that this decision was wrong. Why didn't you go and challenge it in court, not in front of the TV? Go and challenge the court. Tell the court in the court that you are deciding wrong. But then, whatever the court decides, you have to abide by it. This is the rule of law. If the Palestinian Authority doesn't get to grips with these problems, what do you think the future holds for the Palestinian people? Uh, the future will be uh, awfully bad, and it means destruction of the Palestinians. Destruction? Destruction, yes. It destroys, it destroys the nation because it's failure to get justice. The broadcasters are not independent. The main evening news of the Palestinian Broadcasting Corporation almost always starts with Yasser Arafat. يستقبل الرئيس ياسر عرفات بمقر الرئاسة في رملا ظهر اليوم عضو الكنيسة الإسرائيلي رئيس الحزب الديمقراطي العربي عبد الوهاب دراوشي. Leading the news with the leader is almost universal in the Arab world, but here there's a specific objective, selling compromise with Israel to skeptical Palestinians and reminding them that only Yasser Arafat's strategy will get them their state. عقدت لجنة المتابعة الفلسطينية الإسرائيلية اليوم اجتماعا للبحث في قضايا المرحلة الانتقالية وفي مقدمتها المرحلة الثانية للانسحاب الإسرائيلي والإفراج عن المعتقلين بالإضافة إلى قضية المطار والميناء والممر الآمن. The studio is on the ground floor of Yasser Arafat's headquarters in Gaza. State TV is the kind of institution he wants. We are a governmental TV. We are uh, TV who is talking on behalf of the Palestinian people and on behalf of uh, the Palestinian National Authority. And the symbol of our Palestinian people is uh, President Arafat. And our president is President Arafat. So it's, uh, everything is uh, collected with each other. Do you also talk about the corruption on, in this studio, on the news? On the news. No, in the news we we only uh, concentrate about uh, or concentrate on uh, the political issues and the peace process. We concentrate on peace process because we want peace process. 
Corruption is discussed on other programs, but the people we've interviewed couldn't say the same things on Palestinian TV. Run. There's no real criticism of the leadership in the papers either. Al-Quds, the biggest Palestinian daily, usually leads with Yasser Arafat. Maher al-Alami buys Al-Quds every day. He worked for the paper for more than 20 years, finishing as a night editor. One evening, he decided not to put Yasser Arafat on the front page. Alami thought he just wasn't that day's top story. The next morning, he took a call from Jabril Rajoub, the head of preventive security, the authorities' enforcer on the West Bank. He was very angry and told me, why you did not publish the story of our chairman Arafat and his meeting with the others on the front page? You have to come tomorrow to my office in Jericho. I told him, why? I did not commit any crime. He told me, if you are not going to come to my office in Jericho, I'll bring you and cut you pieces and put you in the trunk of the car and bring you to my office in Jericho. You have to come tomorrow to my office in, in Jericho at 8.30 sharp. Alami went to Jericho. He was thrown into jail. After an international campaign, he was released unharmed. Since then, the PA has been less heavy-handed with Palestinian journalists. But local news organizations now know more clearly than ever that some things just cannot be said. We do have, until now, the self-censorship, which is imposed on the main local newspapers. They don't publish anything which create the anger of Chairman Arafat or the PA. They don't publish anything concerning the violations of the human rights. They don't publish anything about the corruption. They publish only what pleased the PA. We have the press of the Sultan, the press, of <laughs> not the press of Her Majesty. Not the press, not the Her Majesty. We have the press of Sultan. And Arafat is the Sultan. And Arafat is our Sultan, of course. And the, his style of, uh, you know, the individual uh, rule man, he represents he's the one man show. This is his regime, the one man show. He must act and he must intervene in any things, even the very silly matters, he must intervene in it. <laughs> Despite all the problems, the Palestinian Authority still allows freedoms that just don't exist in some other Arab countries. This isn't Syria or Iraq or Libya. Palestinian human rights groups who first emerged to fight against the brutalities of the Israeli occupation now campaign against the abuse of power by their own side. It's just as well because the judges and the lawmakers are so weak, they've become the best check there is on the power of the leadership. Some people can see an improvement. Two years ago, Dr. Iyad Saraj was imprisoned and beaten for criticizing the Palestinian Authority. Now he educates the police about human rights. <laughs> Siraj is allowed to visit prisoners in their cells to see if they're being ill-treated. He thinks there's progress, but they have to keep up the pressure. Okay, Generally speaking, I think the authorities more 
ready to listen, particularly when they realized that we and we, the human rights activists, and the Palestinian Authority are all in one boat. We are not a fifth column. This is our national project. This is our land. This is our country. This is our authority. We want to improve this authority. We are not against the authority. We want a strong authority. Strong with the law, not outside the law. I still believe that a state should have to be established on justice and on the respect of the rights of the people. Without respecting the rights of the people, I don't believe that the people that their rights abused are really going to participate in the building in the future of that state. After years of resistance against Israel, no Arab nation is more politicized than the Palestinians. They've fought for their freedom and their future. Their leaders don't yet have the power of a state behind them, so they might have to change. Palestine could still become the Arab world's first real democracy. We want the law to be strong. That's what we want. We want the rule of law, and that's what, uh, what we need. And I'm sure that when the state would be declared, I think we will move a very uh, long step toward a more transparency and accountability and democracy. But some Palestinians doubt that Yasser Arafat will change the political style he's had all his life. The whole Palestinian future is in a crisis. Uh, and, and that's the absence of, of a, 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 a real leadership which could really harness, uh, mobilize the capabilities of the Palestinians. The political system that we have is like a puzzle of 1,000 pieces, and these pieces are hanging there because there is a glue. And the glue today is Yasser Arafat. No one knows what will happen when the glue goes. Dictatorship or democracy, Palestine could go either way. Arafat will take what looks like the shortest route to statehood. But if he gets it wrong, Palestinians might not get their freedom or their state, and the Middle East won't get peace. Hey, 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 hey.